This is a Miner's Minute, a conversation with James Bugle, a mining attorney. Uh, additionally, uh, I believe you have been following and at least in some parts been involved in the California uh, fiasco of, uh, first of all, uh, this uh, moratorium on uh, dredging and then followed by, uh, a comp- well, just it's a long history. It seems to drag out forever just much as the Eastern Oregon Miners Association situation. And I would like as much as possible for you to clarify what's going on. They just had a case yesterday, you heard, and uh, uh, what's your opinions there and what's going on? Using the term uh, fiasco in California, unfortunately, is not very descriptive because there are several mining fiascos going on in California. (laughs) So I'll describe as many of them as you would like to hear about. The the first one relates back to um, this Indian tribe or self-styled Indian tribe that... um, brought actions under both federal and state law to shut down the mining near them. Um, Our personal belief is it's so that the local dope plantations were protected from accidental discovery, but that's another matter. Anyway, on the state side, they said that that the uh, circumstances had changed since the last California Environmental Impact Review, and so we needed to update this, and does it that. Ultimately, that case settled on the basis that the state would promise to update the environmental review within 18 months. In my view, all they had to do was essentially write a note to the file saying, yes, everything's still the same, go away, tribe. Instead, they began to declare that they needed millions of dollars and it would take some transfinite amount of time to do the the thing, and they breached their obligation to get it done. So then after they breached their obligation under this consent decree to get it done, the tribe filed a second lawsuit saying that it was now illegal to do suction dredge mining. We litigated that case down in Oakland, California, which was sort of the home court of the environmentalists, and lost a preliminary injunction. Um, At that point, the preliminary injunction was appealed. While it was on appeal, the tribe went in and uh, bought some legislators and bought the first in two statutory moratoriums. The first one was Senate Bill 670. The current one is AB 120. These moratoriums essentially shut down suction dredging in California until June 2016, unless and until the director of the California Department of Natural of Fish and Wildlife can certify certain things that are impossible to certify. So it's it's a very intricate subject, but the bottom line is that the tribe and its allies have managed to shut down suction dredging until 2016. PLP, working with another lawyer, David Young, out of Los Angeles, challenged that the statute itself, the, under doctrines of federal preemption, they made a foray in federal court. The federal court refused to hear the case because there were fights going on in state court. They made a foray in state court. That matter has proceeded far as far yesterday as to a hearing on their motion for a preliminary injunction against the moratorium. The judge again refused to decide the case, kicked it over until May so he could hear more about the regulatory efforts, and uh, that, that, that fight continues. And that's what's going on primarily on the state side. Do you want to hear about the federal side? Yeah, if you could give us <laughs> a, just a little preview. On the federal <laughs> side, the, federal side the, um, the, the tribe has asserted that anytime someone sends in a notice of intent, that this means that the Forest Service is authorizing mining in California, and if it's authorizing mining, it's required to do a consultation under the Endangered Species Act, because there are allegedly endangered coho in the uh, in the Klamath River and its tributaries, and indeed all the way down to San Francisco and beyond, there are allegedly endangered coho, and they're everywhere, and so anytime anyone is doing any suction dredging anywhere, um, they say that there has to be these Section 7 consultations, which is a practical matter, would gum up mining for years to come. Um, we pursued that case against the tribe in district court. We won in district court. We won in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, unfortunately, the tribes mounted a national effort with allies all over the country pouring in to tell the entire Ninth Circuit Court that they should reverse this three-judge panel that had made this decision so we had another argument in front of something like, I don't know whether it was 11 or 15 judges of the Ninth Circuit this December, December 2011. And that case, uh, the court was evidently split. One group of judges was the judges who live in the reality-based community. 
they said that if you just send in a notice of intent, nobody's authorizing you to do anything. What's this all about? The other group of judges were, oh my God, mining is occurring in a forest. How could we possibly do that without studying it to death? And so the panel was closely divided. And then after the argument, we got something that said, well, now we want you to brief the question of whether the case is moot. So you should have to start all over again, just like you did back in Oregon. Uh, so that's where that one stands. Thank you. This is a Miner's Minute.